Okay, I made this video because inquiring minds wanted to know. I talked with a lot of people all the time, and all the people in the area were kind of filling me in on bits and pieces, bits and pieces. So this is to fill everybody else in on what happened. Like I said, the amazing thing with the whole situation is uh, Hammond PD was there within 30 seconds. They caught both vehicles with both drivers. Apparently, uh, uh, passengers of both vehicles did get away. Uh, the neighborhood called police everybody 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 was on the phone with police so that i mean that's awesome for the neighborhood that's awesome knowing that the neighborhood was johnny on a spot like that and the police said that you know what they got the calls and they were there as fast as the calls came in uh one of the things i didn't know was everybody asked well what can you do about it what can you do about it talking with uh people in the area and the police and all that they says if there's a house that you feel is a nuisance house like that the best thing you could do is just kind of anonymously call in on what's happening uh, because I didn't know that there were laws over there. I know there's laws like that in Chicago. They're called nuisance laws that if the police continually have to be called to a house, it gets marked as a nuisance house and the house will start getting fined every time the police has to arrive. So if the, uh, the, the renters don't get fined, the owner of the property gets fined, the landlord or the homeowner, whoever's owns that property will be fined every time the police have to come to that property if the fines are not paid they're put onto the taxes of the property and if the property taxes aren't paid that's how the city can get the house now i do know another house in the area years back that that actually happened to because the community stuck together everybody called the police and the house was taken it's a vacant house the city owns it right now it's still there Another thing about uh, what I love about uh, Indiana, Hammond and Whiting, uh, two different occasions in the area that I know of that uh, altercations like that broke out and a lot of the old timers ain't ready to let their neighborhood go. So they have their conceal and carry license and one time for sure, the second time somebody kind of told me about it, that when something like that broke out, four people on the block came out with their guns and they held the people causing the altercation at bay, all of them, until the police arrived. Because they said they're not letting that happen to the neighborhood. Stay together, stay tight, watch over for everybody. Like I said, this is information that I got because there was a it happened in broad daylight, a bunch of people were out, and uh you know everybody wants their community to stay the same and stay strong. So uh be vigilant and keep your eyes out. Bye. Okay, the rendition of what happened of the shooting on uh, 121st between West Park and Lake. I've talked with plenty of people, kind of figured out what went on, and this is just what happened. Okay, this is 121st Street, and this is from Calumet. To, we're going to go over, this would be Indy. In between these two streets right here, there's uh, West Park, P A R K, and there's Lake. And this would be an alley. This would be an alley, and then this would be Lake Street right here. Okay, this is from you know everything that I've talked with everybody about. And, Kind of figured out what went on or you know the stories that were kind of all matching to see what went on so apparently there was a black suv that was traveling this way the black suv and right as it passed lake somebody jumped out the passenger side and came around the side with something in their hand now, 121st Street, this is 121, 121st Street is two-way traffic. Well, uh, the SUV apparently went in the middle of both lanes to block the two-way traffic. Right by the alley of Lake and West Park right here, right by the alley, there's a 300, a white 300. A white 300 and the SUV came head to head, you know, head to head right here. 
this guy was already walking on the side with something in his hand. It looked pretty long. Whatever he had in his hand was kind of camouflaged in, uh, I think it was like red, white, and green, and uh, long is what the people were telling me. And then they came head to head right here in the middle of uh, Lake and West Park. The door, passenger side door of the 300 popped open. And this guy right here came a little bit closer. The 300 had a change of heart apparently and started to reverse this way. There was a car right here already heading that way. So this car was going to rear end it so it kind of went out sideways. When it went out sideways, uh, the door was stuck right here so it couldn't go anymore. And meanwhile, there were people out all around. People were out all around as all this was happening. I mean, there was tons of people that witnessed this. Uh, so when this car stopped with the door open because the uh, car was here, this black SUV gunned it and crashed right into the front of the 300. Crashed right into the front of the 300. After it hit the front of the 300, the people in the 300 started shooting into the window of the SUV. Started shooting into the window of the SUV, or shooting at the SUV. Okay, when they shot at the SUV, the SUV backed up onto West Park, jumped the curb, and crashed into a tree. Crashed into a tree right here. Uh, hit the back of the SUV and took off this way and then the other car right here took off this way right here chasing it so uh, that's what happened within 30 seconds uh, within 30 seconds swarms of cops all around I kid you not within 30 seconds swarms of police all around and you know why because everybody that was out everybody that was out was on top of it and called police as it was happening. They did not freeze, they did not, they called the police. So uh, apparently the SUV with the driver and the white 300 with the driver were caught.